in paper 1 we have seen the questions uh, that were given out of 20 questions 10 questions were given so in paper 2 out of the 20 question framework the other questions would be given so it's about 20 to 21 questions so in paper 1 we had uh, differential calculus so that means in differential calculus product rule quotient rule is gone it would not be repeated then we had shedding inequality that was in coordinate geometry uh, sketching then we had quadratic solving family's equation then we had rate of change then we had AP series this is summation so there can be another AP series actually so then we have uh, calculus kinematics so kinematics is given we don't expect kinematics the next one uh, is differential calculus maximum minimum rate we've also done that then uh, trigonometric identities are cos x plus alpha so we have done trigonometric identities but the integration part is not done then we had binomial series we don't have to expect this anymore it is done we had coordinate geometry asymptote sketching and it also had at the end uh, apart from that equation of tangent and normal so that portion can also be said we have done the curve sum although the area portion has not been done yet so now the other 11 questions are left and we have to anticipate that in paper 2 we don't have to worry about everything else now the first question Jan 2007 paper 2 we have a triangle it's trigonometry 2d so let's name the triangle a b c and we have the length 4.6 5.3 and 6.5 in order to find the angle so we have the largest angle is opposite the largest side so the largest side is 6.5 opposite that we have the largest angle and we have to find that since this is a non right angle triangle we have to use the rule of the cosine or the cosine rule for finding the angle using the cosine rule we need all the three sides and in order to find the angle the cosine rule states that cos theta equals to a squared plus b squared this is the sum of the uh, side that makes up the angle and we have to subtract the square of the opposite side divided by double of that a and b the sides that make up the angle so let's do this in triangle ABC it's always a good idea to clarify which triangle and what rule we are using so using the cosine rule uh, we have cos theta equals to 4.6 squared plus 5.3 squared minus 6.5 squared divided by twice into 4.6 into 5.3 so let's use the calculator over here so we have 4.6 squared plus 5.3 squared minus 6.5 squared. So we have this divided by 2 into 4.6 into 5.3. So this turns out to be 0.14356. Now we have to find theta. So theta equals to cos inverse 0.14356. And this turns out to be cos inverse of this is 81.7. To the nearest degree means 82 degree. Question number two is arithmetic series. Although summation was given in paper one, this is a full-fledged arithmetic series sum where we have to form two simultaneous equations. So the first one, the sum of the first ten terms of an arithmetic series is 295. So this is S10 equals to 295. So we need the formula for sum of n terms. Sn equals to n by 2 twice a plus n minus 1 common difference. So we can use that rule. So n is 10. 10 by 2 twice a plus n minus 1 is 9 d equals to 295 so 10 by 2 is 5 so we can send the 5 to the other side we can write twice a plus 9 d equals to 295 divided by 5 295 divided by 5 this is 59 so this is our first equation now we have to form another equation 
the sum of the first eight terms is 196. So S8 is 196. Therefore, n by 2, 8 by 2, twice A, plus n minus 1 is 7D equals to 196. Therefore, twice A plus 7D equals to 8 by 2 is 4. 196 divided by 4. So 196 divided by 4 is going to be 49. So this is equation 2. Now we have to form the simultaneous equation to find the common difference. So for this we have to use the method of elimination. That's the easiest. So this is equation 1. Twice A plus 7D. Equal to 49 equation 2. We cancel off this. Change the sign. And we have 9D minus 7D. Twice D equals to this is 10. Therefore common difference is 5. Question number B, we have to find the value of the first term. So we can use in the first equation. So that's better. So when d equals to 5, twice a, this is a, plus 9d is 5, equals to 59. So this is twice a, so 5, 9, the 45, so 59 minus 45. Fourteen. So therefore, a equals to seven. This is the first term. Question number three is logarithm solving. So we have to solve this logarithm using the basic rule of solving. When you have log base a x equals to b, therefore x equals to the base a to the power b. But here, what we have, we don't have the single logarithm. We have two different logarithms added together. So we need to convert this and simplify this into a single logarithm. And that rule is log base C A plus log base C B. The base has to match is log base C A into B. So we have now this into a single logarithm. So when we solve this, log base 3, 5x plus 12 plus log base 3x equals to 2. So we can write log base 3. So A into B, we can write that 5x plus 12 into x equals to 2. Now using the solving rule, we can now uh, write down that 5x plus 12 into x equals to base is 3 to the power 2. So we are using that log solving rule. So x into 5x is 5x squared plus 12x equals to 9. Now we can do middle term break. This is a quadratic equation. So 5 9 is 45. So 5x squared, so 5 9 is 45. So it's better to check how can we get 12. So we have 45 over here. So 5 9 is 45. 3 3 is 9. 5 3 is 15. So 15 3 is 45. So we got it. So if we subtract 15, of uh, 15 minus 3, we get 12. So 15x minus thrice x minus 9 equal to 0. If we take 5x common, it becomes x plus 3 minus 3. x plus 3 equals to 0. So we have x plus 3. And the other factor is 5x minus 3 equals to 0. So therefore, x equals to minus 3 or x equals to 3 by 5. Now, one thing is very important here. We need to be careful. Because logarithm has some restriction. Although we have two values of x, but we need to check whether it works or not. Because log cannot work if it is zero or negative. It is very, very important to check to make the equation true. For example, when you have log of zero, it is not possible. It's a mathematical error. When you have log of any negative number, that is also not mathematically possible. So we have to be very careful while solving logarithmic equation. So if we plug in x equals to 3, log of minus 3 is not possible. So that value cannot be used. It's an extraneous root. We have to write x equals to 3 by 5. Question number 4 is vectors. Whenever we do vectors in pure math, the best way to do it is by using the position vector rule. The position vector rule says that if you want to find the vector a, b, it has a first point known as the initial point and an ending point known as the terminal point. So it's the position vector of the terminal point, o, b, 
position vector starts from O minus the initial point OA. That's it. So the vector AB is OB minus OA. So the information we have is we have the position vector of R, meaning OR, and S, meaning OS, and we have this information that T divides the line RS. Since we are hearing RS first, let's find the vector RS using the position vector rule. So RS equals to OS minus OR. So OS is given. So OS is 6i. Remember to underline the vector. This is very, very important. i and j minus OR is 2i plus 6j. If you do not underline the vector, it would just be constants. So 6i minus 2i is 4i. 14 minus plus minus 6 is 8. Now T divides RS internally in the ratio of 3 to 1. Now what does that mean? How do you divide a quantity into portions? Suppose you have the quantity T is the total and you have to break it down into two portions. One portion is X, the other portion is Y. So how much would be the first portion? So the first portion would be uh, X divided by X plus Y into the total amount and the second portion would be Y divided by X plus Y into the total amount. So that means uh, if you want to divide the line RS in the ratio of T, which is 3 is to 1, 3 is to 1, that makes it RT. We can find RT. So RT is X by X plus 1, meaning 3 by 3 plus 1, 4. So 3 by 4 into the total length. The total length is RS. So the vector RS, which we already know. We just found that out. So 3 by 4 into 4i plus 8j. If you multiply 3 by 4 into 4, it becomes 3i because the 4 and 4 cancels. And 3 by 4 into 8, it becomes 6j. So 3i plus 6j, this is RT. Now using, we have to find OT. So for finding OT, we can use a position vector rule. So the position vector rule is going to be for RT is the uh, difference between OT and OR. So OT minus OR equals to, which we just found, 3i plus 6j. So, OT equals to 3i plus 6j plus OR. And we already know what OR is. It's given in the question. So, 2i plus 6j. So, if we add it up, 3 plus 2 is 5i, 6 plus 6 is 12j. So, we found OT. Now, the next question, we have to find the unit vector of the vector that we just found. And unit vector of AB is that entire vector divided by the modulus of that vector, meaning the length of that vector. So that's unit vector. If you want to find the unit, you divide it by the length. So a unit vector of OT, unit vector equals to the vector OT, which is 5i plus 12j, divided by the modulus is going to be square root of coefficient of i is 5, 5 is squared, thus coefficient of j squared is 12 squared. So 5i plus 12j, divided by square root of 25, 5 is squared is 25, plus 12 squared is 144, is 169. So 5i plus 12j, divided by 13.